Well, because I think telepathy is a basic feature of communication among animals within animal groups, because I think it's normal, not paranormal, natural, not supernatural, um, I've spent a lot of time investigating telepathy in animals. Um, this area has been almost completely ignored. Uh, so there have been very, very few studies of animal telepathy. Yet as soon as you begin to think about it, and especially if you focus on the animals we know best, dogs and cats, for example, um, it turns out there's a huge amount of evidence. Many people who keep dogs and cats are convinced their animals can read their minds. Of course, they form close bonds with their owners, and so we do get that feature of the bond, which is key for telepathy. Um, many cat owners, for example, um, are convinced their a cat can read their mind and their intentions when they're planning to take the cat to the vet. Uh, the cat disappears. And when this has happened quite often, people try their very best not to let the cat know. They don't let it see them getting out the carrying basket. They don't talk about the vet. Some of them even try to not to think about the vet. Um, some people have even gone so far as to ring the vet from work to make the appointment so the cat doesn't overhear the phone call. And, and then they swing by home on the way after work to pick up the cat and take it to the vet. It's still not there. Uh, we, I collect stories of this kind. I have a database with thousands of case histories. And one, this, we've got hundreds of these stories about cats and vets. So I wanted to see how common this was. So um, my associates and I rang up all the vets listed in the North London Yellow Pages, 65 of them, and asked if they ever had a problem with people missing appointments with their cats. 64 out of 65 said, yes, it happened all the time. And the one exception said it happened so often they'd given up an appointment system for cats. People just have to turn up with their animals. Um, so um, there are many other ways in which dogs and cats seem to read their owners' minds. I discussed these... Uh, in detail in my book, uh, Dogs That Know When Their Owners Are Coming Home and Other Unexplained Powers of Animals. But as the title implies, one of the phenomena I think is most interesting in, is indeed dogs knowing when their owners are coming home. A lot of people have found that their dogs or cats um, seem to know when a member of the family is coming home. They'll go and wait at a door or window. Uh, and uh, for, of course, no one thinks that's odd if it's a routine time because then it could just be a biological clock. No one thinks it's very odd if it happens just a, f a minute or two before because it could be hearing footsteps in the street or the crunch of car wheels on the gravel. Um, what's odd is when it happens five, ten minutes in advance, even half an hour in advance, when people come home at non-routine times. We have 800 or so cases of dogs doing that on our database and about 500 of cats, most of them at non-routine times because that's when people really notice the phenomenon and think it's striking. Um, We've done random household surveys to find out how common this is. And in Britain and the United States, about 50% of dog owners say their dogs anticipate arrivals, about 30% of cat owners. I don't think cats are necessarily less sensitive than dogs. Some of them are just less interested. Um, so um, now, when I was discussing this with my skeptical friend Nicholas Humphrey years ago, um, to my surprise, he didn't deny the phenomenon. Um, he said, oh, my dog used to do that. My mother always knew when I was coming home about half an hour in advance. So I said, well, that's very, very interesting, Nick. How do you think it did it? It couldn't possibly have been hearing your car from 20 miles away, the other side of Cambridge. He said, oh, on the contrary, it just shows what sharp hearing they've got. <laughs> uh, so, so that's what gave me the idea for an experiment. When he and I disagree, we try to think up experiments to resolve our disagreements. And so I said, OK, what would happen if you came home on the train, borrowed a bicycle and cycled from the station so there were no familiar sounds? Um, um, would the dog still know when you were coming? He said, of course not. Maybe just a minute or two before it might hear me he or smell me, but he said, of course it wouldn't. And I said, well, maybe it would. And that's the basis for this key experiment. I've done hundreds of tests with dogs that know when their owners are coming home. How we do the tests is we film the place where the dog waits for the whole time the person's out. So we have a continuous record of that. We have the person go uh, at least five miles from home, and we have them come home at randomly chosen times. We communicate through a pager. Uh, they don't know in advance when they're going to come home. And to avoid familiar car sounds, we have them come home in taxis. 
Um, now, in these experiments, it's over and over again. Uh, dogs know when they're coming home. They go and start waiting when the person decides to come home, when they form that intention, before they've even got into the taxi. We have this on film, hundreds of these films. This is all published now in peer-reviewed scientific journals. And, of course, it's summarized in my book, Dogs That Know When Their Owners Are Coming Home. But this is now pretty robust experimental evidence. And unlike many experiments on human telepathy, it's very repeatable. A lot of those card-guessing type experiments on human telepathy are terribly boring. And usually the scores fall off with time because people just get bored of guessing meaningless cards over and over again. Uh, dogs never get bored of their owners coming <laughs> home. So uh, you can do this experiment over and over again, years, year after year. I have a great film of that. I'm not showing it this evening because there isn't time to show, go through all this evidence in detail. Um, but after my book, uh, Dogs That Know When Their Owners Are Coming Home, was published, I got hundreds, thousands of letters from pet owners all over the world um, with yet more cases. And the new phenomenon that came to my attention, I hadn't really focused on much when I was doing my earlier work, were concerned parrots. It turns out parrots can be extraordinarily telepathic with their owners. Um, many people who have parrots, particularly African greys, have found they seem to read their minds and pick up their thoughts. And the most remarkable cases come in the case of language-using parrots, parrots that speak. With dogs and cats, people often say, if only they could talk. Well, a lot of parrots can. And uh, what happens then is truly remarkable. One of the, um, the most interesting cases I've ever come across uh, came to my attention four years ago in 2000. Um, the, a young woman in, in uh, Manhattan, New York, told me that her parrot, which had a huge vocabulary, um, read her thoughts and, and said what she was thinking about. If she was looking at a picture in a magazine, it would comment on the picture, even though it couldn't see it. Most extraordinary of all, um, it wakes her from her dreams by commenting on her dreams. <laughs> <coughs> Sleeps in her bedroom and, and often wakes her up by saying what she's dreaming about. Um, well, when I heard these stories, I could hardly believe this was true. It was so far off the end of the scale of anything I'd heard before. So I went to New York as soon as I could and um, went to visit the parrot um, and its owner. And I was astonished. First of all, this parrot speaks in sentences. It speaks clearly in full sentences and has thousands of, of different sentences that it says. It now has, as of this year, a vocabulary of about 1,000 words. It's the world record um, talking parrot. Um, in the Guinness Book of Records, the maximum vocabulary they report is 800 words. Aimé Morgana, who owns this parrot, was inspired by an American professor called Irene Pepperberg, who's been working with a parrot called Alex for the last 20 years. Irene Pepperberg has established that Alex uses language meaningfully. The parrot doesn't just parrot things, um, he actually uses words in an abstract way. For example, words for colors, he knows. And you can hold out a tray of objects that Alex has never seen before and say, give me the yellow one. He'll bend over and pick up the yellow object with his beak, even though he's never seen that particular object before, showing he can use the word yellow in an abstract way, not just linked to particular objects. Um, so Pepperberg has already established that parrots can use language meaningfully, which was a big surprise to many people in the scientific world uh, because they thought they couldn't possibly do that because they're literally bird-brained. I mean, they have <laughs> brains less than the size of a walnut. And um, people had previously studied language use in chimps and gorillas taught to communicate through American Sign Language, but parrots do it in plain English albeit with an American accent. Um, uh, well, I was so amazed by this parrot, and I set up some simple tests right there and then, um, that I decided, uh, in which it did show astonishing telepathic abilities. We set up a controlled series of experiments on telepathy. We got a third party to uh, put photographs corresponding to uh, uh, with images corresponding to words the parrot knows in a series of sealed envelopes, 150 sealed envelopes, each with a different image, randomized, sealed in thick brown paper uh, envelopes. Nobody knew what was in each envelope. 
in, in these experiments, Aimé went into a different room from the parrot on a different floor um, and then opened one of the envelopes and looked at the image for two minutes uh, while the parrot was filmed in the other room to see if it said anything corresponding to what she was looking at. And then she t- opened the next envelope. So it was a series of tests. We've done, we've done over a hundred of these tests. 